hope you enjoyed my joke. The joke teaches us something really important about rescue. It teaches us that we have to recognise that we're in trouble in dirty, polluted water and that it's dangerous for us. It teaches us that the person who's providing the rescue needs to be trustworthy. And the person providing the rescue has to believe that what he's rescuing is valuable. And we need to know where safety is. And all of those things are important in understanding our Bible reading that Fran has read so nicely today. So here we have some disciples out fishing and mending their nets and lending Jesus their boat. What we understand from this is that it's a summary because if we look in the other Gospels there's a little bit more detail. We realise that the disciples had already met Jesus. Andrew had been pointed to Jesus as a person to get to know by John the Baptist. And he had gathered his brother and said, let's go and see Jesus. And so they went along and they asked him where he was staying. And because they showed that interest, Jesus said, come, see, spend a day with me at the place I'm staying. So they'd already spent time with Jesus and they must have thought that he was trustworthy, that he had something important to say to them that they could learn from. They enjoyed spending time in his company when they were on the edge of the lake. The Gospel of Luke talks in more detail, but before that we'll look at the Gospel of Mark. Mark emphasises the ordinariness of the day. Just the disciples there doing their normal everyday business when Jesus called them. And I think there's a lesson in that for us. The Gospel of Luke tells us that um, Jesus cast the boat out onto the Sea of Galilee because the crowds were too much and he needed to find some space and a place where his voice would carry. And the disciples let him on that boat, probably because he'd already met them, and they must have been really pleased that he had come to their place. He had come to meet them in a place that they were familiar with, showing interest and care for them. They had had a bad day. They hadn't caught any fish overnight and so they were mending their nets in a sense of frustration, I guess. Where is the next meal coming from? Where's our business going? And during that time on the boat, Jesus said, come back out, come and fish properly. And it was daytime. Anybody who's a fisherman knows that you don't fish during the day. You fish at night if you want to catch something, particularly in the Sea of Galilee. But the disciples trusted Jesus enough to try it. And they hauled in a huge, big catch of fish. Well, that proved to them that Jesus wasn't just an ordinary man. He was a miraculous man. And they said, Peter says, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man, recognising his state before God. And that's where the Gospel of Matthew takes over. So we start to see that they had already got to know him, they'd already begun to trust him, and they had already begun to see that they needed rescue. For rescue to occur, we need to know we're in a place that isn't safe. And Jesus calls us to recognise that. When we look further back in the Gospel of Matthew, we realise he had preached, repent for the kingdom of God is near. What did that mean? It means turn away from the things that you do that are wrong and come towards the kingdom of God. And all these thousands of years later, that is still the Gospel of Christ. Turn away from what you do wrong and come towards the kingdom of God. Now, of course, Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And how are we ever going to convince you of that? The answer, of course, is that we don't. Jesus does, because we believe he's alive and living today. So in the ordinariness of your lives, even in these extraordinary times, when we're looking at what matters most to us, 
we have to think about our priorities. It's the equivalent uh, decision of, oh, do we care about the bait or do we care about life itself in eternal terms? So you need to know whether Jesus is somebody safe that you can trust your eternal life to. You need to know what's going to happen next. You need to know whether your life is going to be turned upside down. In one sense, of course, lives are turned upside down by Jesus. He comes into your life and he asks you to follow him. And that may mean a radical change of priorities. You turn away from the things that aren't good towards the things that are. So in a spiritual sense, it turns your life upside down because you now have somebody you're following. Those disciples knew that they were trusting somebody safe, but perhaps you don't. Perhaps you're wondering whether he's safe or not. Like those first disciples, you need to spend time looking into the life of Jesus to discover that. In the Bible, there are many stories about Jesus, about what he stood for, what he thought, and about who he was. And I would highly recommend you visit some of that writing. The Gospel of Matthew is, of course, a great place to start. There's lots of great, interesting stories. There are lots of things that will puzzle you. There are lots of sort of teachings that make you think a bit more about what life really is all about. So I would encourage you in these times to work out whether you think Jesus is trustworthy, whether he's worth following. And if you do follow him, what are you following him in? Well, the same principle applies, get to know him. The other thing to note is, if you are following him, do your ordinary lives matter? And what is he calling you to? When you look at these stories of Jesus calling those first disciples, you think, is he calling me out of what I do now into something different? Our occupations, the things that we do. And what's important to notice is that James and John were there with their father Zebedee. And Zebedee stayed behind on the seashore and he almost certainly continued to fish. What we know is that those first century disciples went fishing on the Sea of Galilee after this, so they had access to a boat. I want to show you a picture of a boat of first century times, which they have in, uh, in a museum, as you can see. Obviously, it's decayed a bit since then, but it's a really good illustration of what a boat might have been like if you use your imagination. Now Zebedee would have been very helpful to Jesus because that boat got him across to various different places because it was the quickest form of transport as Jesus wa walked and made his life and went out to search for other people to join him and change their lives. So what is it that he changes your life to? The Bible says that he changes our life from a state of uh, being dirty in that polluted water, taking us out and putting us in a safe place in time that we will go to eternity to be with him, to still be his friends, which is what he's calling us to. So you need to have a think about whether you're valuable or not. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, am I valuable? Does God really care about me? And the answer, of course, is yes. We know that it says God so loved the world that he gave his son so that whoever believes in him can have eternal life. All the things that you do wrong are things that Jesus takes care of in eternal, for, for you on that cross so that you can go to eternity to be with him in the next life. So what have we learned? We've learned Jesus is trustworthy, that he calls us to follow him and get to know what that looks like. 
we've learned that he is able to rescue us and we've learned that we are valuable. So I ask you today then, are you prepared to see what Jesus is like? Are you prepared to use your skills in your ordinary lives, just like Zebedee did? And James, John, Peter and Andrew also took part in those expeditions by boat. And they were in charge of the, uh, that boat. So are you prepared to use your ordinary life to serve the Lord in extraordinary ways and let him guide you in that? Are you prepared to have your spiritual life turned upside down, but your ordinary life may be or maybe not, depending on whether you are Peter, James, John and Andrew, or you are Zebedee. So I want you to think about this as you go through the next few weeks. Keep joining us for the sermon if you don't know enough. Read the Bible online, pray to God and ask him to show you who he is. If you do, I'm utterly confident that you will like Jesus. And he will, if you ask him, become your saviour and Lord. So bless you today. I hope it's one that you can enjoy. And I, for one, am praying for some. So we'll see what the Lord has for us. Amen.